Hello guys, the DB Grindy here, back at it again with another video, and this time I'm going to be going over some of the top cut list from the 3v3 YCS that was in Brazil last weekend, and I waited a little bit to go over these, so that way we can get more of these deck lists sent in, uh, just because they weren't all instantly posted right away, and they're still not all posted, uh, but let's hop right in. So we have the first place list, this would be Ruben's list, um... And looking over, we see 45 cards. Uh, doesn't play the driver gamma with the other red eyes. And then we can see 11 going second cards. Three ash, three nib, three eclipse, two talons. Now that's obviously going second, like not counting the best deals because sometimes those are going second cards. Uh, it does play the branded beast in the main deck. Yeah, I, I think that card's nice. Uh, maybe it won't be as nice now that Unchained is going to be a lot more popular. But at least before before this card was really nice um maybe after the unchain you know fad maybe this card isn't as good uh, i also like the one phantasmia in the side you can search it off magma mutt you know if you play against like unchained you can you know depending on what they go for depending on what they go for if they're just going for like like they have solo rage and they go muckcracker effect try to bring out yama you magma mutt that and then they go like, okay, you know, do a little bit something else, pass, and you end phase search Phantasmia. Now, if they want to use Solar Rage, or if they want to pop and Yama bring back a link, you know, I mean, you, you got Phantasmia. Uh, so that's pretty good. And then also, this is like pretty good against like a decent amount of decks, like Rescue Ace and stuff. You can just side this in, go in second. You don't have to like search it, you can also just draw it. Uh, extra deck, plays double seal. Wait, what's. Is there something missing? One, two... I wish it was, like, more in order. Uh, that's there, that's there. What well, feels like... I guess, like, a Tum. You don't really have to play that card, though. Uh, there's no Appalooza or anything like that. You know, playing the four Synchros. Okay, XYZ Encore, mainly for Pearly, I'm guessing. And then, let's go on to the next list. So, this would be Pat... No, no, this isn't Pat. This is, uh, Kamal Crooks. Uh, first place pearly deck and then i'm only going to remember the names for the first team by the way after that i didn't write them down i didn't write it, i didn't even write them down for these ones but looking at the interesting things about this one we see triple nib in the main deck uh the card is pretty decent for this for this event i would have definitely main deck three of it oh my gosh people were playing in this card hard people that played on chain didn't really know how to beat this card at all if they were playing that deck so this card had a lot of value uh, then triple Fenrir, uh, I mean Fenrir's pretty good and pearly, weird, right? Like you can summon it, get a free search for Fenrir, and then like activate a pearly spell, discard Fenrir, go summon. People aren't playing Droll anymore, not in the main deck at least. So like, you're not really going to get caught with that, and that was like the only punishable force, so now that's not there, so it's, you know, it, it's, it's pretty good, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. Uh, triple Prosperity, just more consistency trying to hit more pearly spells too you can break a lot of decks uh end boards with just like engine and then two talents two eclipse three imperm and then one yeep all right so the two two uh also only decided to play two field spell decided to cut down on the pearly spells while also playing 41 a little bit wild because like you know sometimes the kitty is just not a good kitty and it you know, playing 41 with one less is going to try to make this not want to be a good kitty more often. And then triple Lava Golem, just good going second card, especially against like the Unchained deck. Uh, you can drop this on them. It is a Fiend. Yet yeah, You also do have to remember though, that it is a Fiend. So if you like leave this on their board when you pass, it could like Shyama pop it and try to play like that. Also good against just like a bunch of different decks, like a bunch of combo decks too. We can see that we're not side decking any more hand traps, so we kind of needed that. Harpies, Lightning Storm, Crossouts, Encore. Okay, uh, we've seen a lot of XYZ Encore so far. You know, both lists have played it. Uh, the next deck is like a super standard extra deck. I don't think you have to play an Out to Contact C because like half the pearly players are playing an Out to Contact C. So if your opponent is dumb enough to play Contact C on their deck list, that's on them. Because if half the pearly players instantly have an out for it, that card should not be in their deck against pearly. You know, if it if everyone's playing this exact deck list, then sure. But everyone's not. A lot of people are playing, like, IP or just, like, another Link 2 to make. And then we have PAX first place deck list now. Um, 
Okay, so looking at this, wait, this isn't even his full deck list. Okay, now I got the deck list I actually updated, the right deck list, added the harpies in it. But okay, looking at it, we got two Rakia in it. They do play Disaster. I think this will become more and more standard, especially as more and more people want to play Nib in their deck. Uh, it's just really good going second anyways. Better put your deck on draw it, playing the contract package. Uh, just more Unchained stuff going first, pretty much more pops. And then just like more gas going second, which, you know, goes alongside of what their deck's doing with the Eclipse, the book, the Harpies, the Thrust, the Talents, the Prosperity. Um, also the fact that like this engine is just good going second, like all the Unchained stuff. You can try to like Abominable, Disaster and stuff like that. Uh, side deck, we see a bunch of Karma Cannon. Holy, three Karma Cannon. I didn't even know this was in the list. That's crazy. That actually is crazy, because, like, I, I've seen this list before. I didn't even realize there was Trouble Karma Cannon on the side. Uh, then we got one Trap Tracks, uh, one D-Barrier, three Anti-Spell. Trap Tracks isn't, like, that popular, but it's pretty much Trap Tricks, but pop one of your guy. Uh, and then Extra Deck, nothing really crazy there. Uh, I guess, like, one Anguish. You know, everyone was playing two of this card before, but Cash is not as popular, and... Yeah, I guess cash players are maybe choosing to not hit this card. I'm not sure. Um, if you play two of it, like, obviously cash will never hit it. But if you play one of it, then I feel like cash is going to hit that card a decent amount if they can. But on to the second place list. Uh, we don't have the whole second place teams list. We only have one, uh, and that was the Super Heavy Samurai Vanquish Soul deck, which I'm happy because this is probably the only one I cared about on the second place team, to be honest, just because this was a cool list. But going ahead, looking over it, I uh, see the two Big Benki, the two Magma, one Caesar, uh, Triple Fenrir. Let's see, so we played two, three, three, six, um, and then one Soul Gaia. So we just wait, we played two Big Benki with that package, huh? It's not a it's not a very big package, but I guess maybe we maybe we played two of this because it's not as much of a brick because it's an earth. Maybe that's why we played two of it. Um, and then Ash, main decking draw. I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. That, that doesn't seem very good. I mean, that kind of seems like a, you know, three weeks ago type of thing, right? Like, everyone's been moving away from combo more and more as every waking day has happened uh one Durendal. uh one Durendal. okay i guess they just wanted one more consistency card in their deck um and then rota stake your soul continue and then triple tc boo mm, side deck you know a couple nibs some shifter nothing really crazy extra deck is a little bit wild but you can kind of expect that from this deck they also play the dark arm which is nice can make that with like double heavy burger or Fenrir plus heavy burger and then uh, Dempsey works really well with the super heavy stuff to get you to raisin which is insane this card is so good so good but now we have the third place list so this is like uh, the whole third team like a whole third place team like Walter Jesse and Christian Arena. I almost forgot who the last person was for a second, but very good team, obviously. Um, we got one Rakia. Uh, I mean, like one Talents Thrust, Book, Book. Uh, I mean, nothing like that crazy. Side deck, Ash, Nib, just Generics. You know, you want this kind of somewhere on your deck list. Uh, and then, so, oh, Grave of Super Ancient Organism. Okay preparing you know still for like branded and stuff uh, it's also good against cash obviously um but this like overlaps with those decks too which this deck can kind of struggle against branded if this deck goes first i think this deck beats branded a very majority of the time but if this deck goes second against branded it can definitely have a problem especially with this type of list like the no hand traps at all type of list like this is going to struggle extremely hard against branded uh i mean gimmick puppet lock what do you do <laughs> you know what i mean what would you even do you would just look at your opponent and be like yeah next game um but you know maybe if you have this you can flip it and hope you can live and it's a really good floodgate against that deck because it's a permanent floodgate uh it doesn't hurt your deck that much either it hurts it a little bit but not that much 
Uh, now we have fourth place. Uh, this is Patrick Holbin and Gabe. That's Game Gabe, Gabe Molina. And then the, uh, Dennis hasn't showed off his list yet. He's going to show it off soon, though. Uh, probably will be posted on the JNC channel. And then, yeah, so this is the uh, two of the third or two of the fourth place people um, that played Unchained. Two Phoenix Rhino Warrior. Okay. I guess maybe just wanting the second tour guide to be super strong also. Um, I, I'm not really sure about I, I don't like that at all. I'm not going to lie. I really don't like that. Because your deck already has, like, you know, Rakia, Sarama. And if your combo doesn't have to start with a normal summon, then that's even better. Gives you more options. So I, I don't really like that that much. I, I definitely am okay with the Fenrir, though. Um, especially with a lot of the decks that were played at this tournament. Like, you can kind of use your engine to break through boards, and then Fenrir also adds more to your first turn board. Uh, book, Talents, Imperm, Clean 40, Nib, Droll, Back Row Cards, Thrust. Um, oh, doesn't play the... Oh, never mind, it's right there. Okay, I was about to say, doesn't play the Machine Axe. A little bit crazy, but nope, just at the end of the deck list. Uh, we can see out there... Oh! Oh! They're crazy. The two Yama. I feel like the third Yama like actually does come up. Especially if you play against Cash and you go through one and then they rip one. Like that that third Yama really does come up. Like that that one really, really would. Uh but okay, I guess they just wanted, you know, more utility in their extra deck. We can see like the Azalea, Unicorn, Cerberus, you know, the rank three. I get it, I get it. But okay, on to the next. We got top eight. Uh I think we have the whole team for this one. Uh we got Sprite, Melfi, two red, two carrot. Um, just some hand traps, you know, just generic going second cards. Uh, D barrier, anti spell, plain plump. This lets you make a really big Zeus because you know you can like uh, two level twos make plumps. So now you got that. No, I mean, I'm just gonna hold up three because plump's gonna end up being a material on Zeus and then uh, equip two. And then Downard, and then Zeus. So, you know, you get three wipes on your Zeus, which is pretty cool. On um, the next top eight list, this is from the uh, same team as the one before. Uh, this has just regular list. Oh, but with the Unchained stuff. Oh, this is the person that was on stream. Uh, yeah, the one Shivara, the one Escape. That is the Unchained package that you can play in Labyrinth. If you, you know, turn one, get to do, like, Ku Clock, Discard Chandelier, yada, 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 um, you're going to end up with some Fiends on your field, and then that can let you go into Yama, and then you can go Yama Effect, you can grab Shivara, and then you can Shivara, pop what you reset off Lovely to summon out, and then use those to go up in the Solar Rage, and then Shivara can set Escape, so then you have Solar Rage plus Escape, and Yama Engrave, and Yama can bring back any Fiend from the Hand or Grave, um, so that can bring out Lovely back from the graveyard also, not just Unchained cards. Um, they also decided to play two Karma Cannon in the main deck. Okay, Droll in the main. And then on to the next list. This is the last uh, person from the top eight team, uh, from that same team. And this is just a very standard Chimera branded list. Only playing one Fallen of Alabaz doesn't want more follow-up off the branded fusion, which... I don't agree with that at the beginning of me playing that deck. Well, I mean, I haven't played this deck in a while, but when I was playing it, um, I thought the one Fallen of Albez was correct, and then it's like, I don't know, I kind of want more follow-up off Branded Fusion. I, I found myself going for Mirror Jade more and more, and not even just, like, sometimes not even with Branded Fusion. You know, if you have Fallen of Albez, you can also just, like, go for Mirror Jade um, and then try to use that to dump Branded Fusion and then try to get more follow-up. Uh, I just found, like, sometimes even if you have, like, 12 cards in your hand for follow-up, you just, like, find yourself not having, like, the strongest turns. So if you're able to, like, have, I don't know, like, let's say, like, uh, less cards in hand for follow-up, but you have stronger cards, like a Branded Fusion, you know, you can do a lot more to a board. Because um, you can bait stuff out pretty easily with Camaro. Or if you get to Summon King, you know, then you have, like, Monster Negate next to it also. Uh, playing Cross Sheep in the deck. Okay, yeah, just using that to Summon back. Not bad, and then just a random link to the out back row. Um, it was kind of cool how you can just always play an MST in your extra deck. And then we got Rescue Ace. Oh, this is, uh, I actually forget his whole name, but it is Hector something. But 
You got top 16. Uh, he's a multiple YCS champion. He's the person that won with Paulo before in the 3v3. But we got Rescue Ace. And I actually tested this list. I do really like the Ibli. The Ibli is really nice. Um, it's just FTK. Like Gigantic, Beat Cop, Ibli. Nice. Uh, classic Floodgates. And then also they're main decking cross out with a bunch of cross out targets. And it's... It's not bad, you know, it cuts down the amount of non-engine that you can play, which sucks, but then it protects your engine more, and then also playing stuff like this means that you don't get to play the impulse, the extra impulses, uh, which you can side deck them, the extra impulses and stuff if you want to. Uh, Judgment, D-Barrier, Red Resonator, this is nice for time, because uh, you can summon it off Gigantic, and boom, went in time. So now your deck has a, a way to do that nicely. The next list, we have another top 16 team. Um, this is the list that Paulo played, and I'm just going to assume the whole team played the same list since they were all playing cash. So, or at least fairly similar. We got like Ash, Shifter, Talons, Book, Econ, Imperm for the 17 non engine that this deck can afford to play. You know, not playing the Desires or anything. I mean, that, that 17 number is like very good, it's a very strong number. Uh, it's the same number it's been for months. Sad face. Please hit this deck. Please drop a ban list. Honestly, just, I really want this card to get hit. That'd be nice. But then we got Nib in the side deck. Back of removal, Eclipse, Cosmic Barrier. Plays the DDD because we play Econ. Okay. Yeah, so you can like Econ or Talents take the DDD and then put Machinix over it. And you can also Zeus over that. That's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. Uh, also playing the Red Eyes Flare, and then just playing the Fossil Warrior and Goliath for the Prosperity. Uh, Goliath, I guess, isn't bad. Um, maybe becoming a little bit better with Unchained. I'm trying to think of on how often you have a rise there and how often it'd matter for it to not be popped. And I guess it's pretty good, right? Because even after you go through a rise effect, they can still try to push. And if you just have this that can't be destroyed by card effects, then they're going to have to do some, like, awkward, awkward plays to eventually out that Arise. Unless, if you know, they just summon Disaster. And then, Disaster! Link! So this probably isn't, like, the greatest. Um, uh, and then on to the last list that I'm showing off. This is another Top 16 list. Uh, two people actually played this list on the same team from Top 16. So we got two Marincess in Top Cut. Nice. But Blue Tang, Spring Girl, just playing the 15 Marincess, I, I'm happy that they're doing that. Um, it's very good, especially in your combos. A lot of your combos, you want Blue Tang to, like, hit. And, you know, if you play a lot of them, you're going to hit pretty often. And then they're also playing the Ice Jade Ran. This is just a discard summon. It's Long Young, but this is level 7, and it brings out a level 3 token. And then you can only go for the Ice Jade Grimmer. Uh, if you want to make a synchro, obviously you can still link off. It's not like that part of uh, Long Young. It just locks you in the waters instead of locking you in the synchro. So you can use it to, like, you know, go up into, like, Coral. But now we got Ash, Troll, Moonlit, Veiler, Imperm, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18 going second cards. Yeah, I mean, the deck can afford to play it. Um, we can see that they're not playing Desires in their deck or anything. So that's why they're able to afford to play so many of the Ice Jades while still having all of this non-engine. Uh, then one Battle Ocean, two Dive, one Wave. I agree with the one Wave and the one Battle Ocean, but I still think three Dive should be standard. I'm not going to lie. It is so good. Like, when you draw one of your spells in your deck, one of them, if you just draw Dive, now Dive is not a Monster Reborn. It's an e -telly. That's a really big difference, especially when it comes down to your combos and how much like how much they can do, and how many interrupts and how many interruptions you can actually set up. And I don't know, it's, it's like I don't know. Once you actually start playing the deck more and more, and I know they just top with it, so like it's weird for me to say it because like I like I've never played this deck in a tournament, but like I really do think three dives should be standard. And once you try it and like learn the lines with like your any monster plus spell, like. You become a lot better with the deck. And you get a lot better lines, too. There's a lot you can do. Like, like one Blue Tang plus spell. One Seahorse plus spell. Like, all, all those. Like, nice. Like, a mo one nice monster plus spell gets you big combo. 
uh, you know, one not nice monster plus spell, it's still going to give you really good combo because now you're going to have Battle Lotion, so you don't even have to go for Great Bubble Reef. You can go for Aqua, so that means you're always going to have one negate at the end. You're always going to have one dive. And now it's like I'm trying to also accomplish in the combo the third negate, the Toad. Um, I also, in my build, play double Great Bubble Reef, so sometimes if you don't have Field Spell, you can just try to get to double Great Bubble Reef, um, which is really good because it's pretty much, you know, you have two monsters with 38 attack that are unaffected. It's pretty much like I'm playing Ad Ignister, but I'm drawing like Heat Soul. And then I have more follow up too because of these cards. Uh, but yeah, and then the side deck is just all, you know, we, we have all the hand traps in the game pretty much in our main deck. So then in our side deck, it's all the board breakers and then a couple goes in for going first. Overall, though, nice list. Uh, happy to see them playing the Bahamut Shark Toad. I think that stuff is, I think that stuff's like really, really mandatory. Uh, like if you want to only play two dives, sure, the deck's still going to work, but you know, you, you should definitely be playing three of this. It even makes like your blue tangs better. Uh, drawing dive is really good. People don't know how to interrupt this deck correctly. So they always stop Sea Angel like so often. So if you just like drew the extender already, like sure, you still like, it actually would hurt then if they stopped this because then it's like, oh, I don't get to search this. And I don't get the E-Tally off this, but sure, it's whatever. I can still combo very easily through that. But that is going to be it for the video. And yeah, I'm going to leave a link down below to a like spreadsheet of a bunch of the top cut decks or top being lists of like regionals and YCSs and stuff like that. So you can go ahead and check that out. Uh, Super Paluto. I'm pretty sure is the main creator of that, at least a co-creator of it. Um, but shout out to Super Paluto. Uh, we love him on this channel. Helps out the channel a lot. And with all that being said, the DB Grinder signing off. Peace. Have a nice day. Stay safe.